Building up a culture of life in today's world can often seem like an uphill battle, but one group is equipping Catholics to do just that. The Napa Institute prepares Catholic leaders to defend and advance the Catholic faith in today's emerging secular society. Its ninth annual conference in the Napa Valley, slated for late July, is stacked with pro-life Catholic speakers, from St. Gianamala's own daughter to Cardinal Raymond Burke. John Meyer joins us from our EWTN West Coast studio in the Diocese of Orange in California. He is the executive director of the Napa Institute. John, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Catherine. Really a pleasure to be here. I'm grateful to have you. And John, the Catholic Church has undergone 2,000 plus years of history. Can you put into perspective for us how great are the challenges today for the pro-life issue? Well, you know, I, I think the challenges are great as always, and it's a great time to be saints, but I think there's tremendous opportunity right now. Um, really with the laws passed on both sides of the issue. Obviously, we all know what's going on in, in states like Georgia or Alabama, which are great opportunities in the courts, but I think we're equally as much helped by what's going on in New York and Illinois because it's, it's bringing to light the issue in ways it's never been brought to light for people on the other side. I think one of our great challenges is that people live in echo chambers. You know, who they get their news from, who they talk to, how they think about others is almost predetermined or curated for them. So when you get something like a partial birth, birth abortion bill in, in Illinois and people start to look at what does that mean, it starts to have them re-examine their whole belief system on abortion. You know, the idea of human dignity that they've never thought of when they see the atrocity that is committed in, in, in these bills in Illinois and New York, they can kind of reconsider, well, if, if I don't agree with this, then then maybe I need to reconsider my entire position. So I think that's where we've seen swings in the polls. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I think it's, it's a great help to us uh, to bring that to light. The same way David Delighton brought to light the, uh, the atrocities of the organs, I, I think that now we're getting the atrocities of what, what is abortion really and how can we not ignore the human, human baby anymore. It's a really good point. It's in the forefront of people's mind. And John, we as Catholics are called to be in the world, but not of it. How then do we best engage on the life issue with those around us? Well, we have to bring it, we have to be apostles to the world. We have to go out there and, and speak to the world. And I think we need to approach it. Um, one of the things that society lacks right now is civil discourse. So I think going out there it, confidently and with fortitude and, and explaining our position in, uh, in a way that people maybe have never heard. Um, have them look at the issue maybe for the first time ever. I think a lot of people, it's, it's an issue they've never deeply considered, and it, it's not necessarily their fault. It's a lack of faith formation, of human formation, and, um, you know, we also need to, to bring it to an emotional state. You know, the, the left uh, on this issue has always used emotion uh, as the women's rights. You know, one of our good friends, Pastor Eugene Rivers, just shared with me a, a campaign he's doing, Black Life Matters. Mm -hmm. She's a child, not a choice, and it's a simple slogan that has profound meaning and really causes you to think deeply about the issue. So I think not necessarily going out to argue the issue, but to share the, uh, mm -hmm. the good news as we're called to as Christians to, to change people's hearts and minds. Mm -hmm. And to share these stories. John, how can the Napa Institute, your group, contribute to building up a culture of life? What's your goal there? Well, Napa has three pillars in everything we do, formation, uh, prayer, and community. And, and I think what we can do is prepare leaders in all three of those ways, forming them so that they can meaningfully defend um, the, the position of life, uh, the church's positions, um, and, and do it in a concrete, meaningful way, but then at the same time, uh, come together in communities of prayer because we know as Catholics that this is also a spiritual battle and, and we, need, we need the help of the Holy Spirit to win it. But community is very important. One of the things Napa does very well is it brings together communities of, of Catholic leaders so that they can work together. Uh, collaboration is key here and I think it's one thing we lack, especially in the pro-life movement, is, is collaboration among organizations. And looking at this year's Napa Institute Conference speakers in July, the lineup includes bishops Thomas Paprocki, Thomas Daly, and Joseph Strickland. All of these bishops have spoken out boldly against pro-abortion Catholic politicians. Yep. What role do the bishops play in defending the sanctity of life? Well, they are our shepherds, and they need to be outspoken. And that's exactly why we chose those three bishops and also Archbishop Chapier to be on our panel of bishops this year, because we need brave shepherds. Um, you know, we look to them uh, to be that moral authority, and they need to stand up and do it. Similar to the way that uh, Bishop Tobin in Rhode Island stood up on the LGBT issues, and he's he's getting slammed right now by the uh, left. But it, he need, we need to have that bravery among our shepherds to stand up and be the moral authority to speak the truth, so that then Catholics are empowered to do the same thing. 
John Meyer, Executive Director of the Napa Institute, thank you so much for your insight and thank you for taking time to join us. Thanks so much, Catherine. To find out more about the Napa Institute or to register for their July conference, go to napa-institute.org.